hey guys, um, I don't have much time at the moment, but I thought I'd try and smash this out so anyone who wants to see the answers can. I haven't looked at it yet. Um, this is my first peek. Okay, so this one here, we've got to find the derivative, dy dx. We know if we derive that, we get 3 and multiply it by that, we get 3e to the 2x. If we derive this, we get 2e to the 2x. If we multiply it by 3x, we get plus 6x um, e to the 2x. You can leave it like that. Find to simplify it and simplify the rule. Okay, so here, f dash of x we know is u over v. So v times u dash, negative e to the x sine x, minus u times v dash, e to the x cos x, over e to the 2x, so e to the x squared. On top, if we take out an e to the x, we get negative sine x plus cos x. And because we've got an e to the x out the front and an e to the 2x on the bottom, this cancels to become e to the x. So negative sine x plus cos x v times u dash minus u times v dash over, yep. Okay, find the rule for an antiderivative of g of x. So three on two x minus three dx. We want the top to be the derivative of the bottom. So we want it to be a two. We can divide by two at the front. The top is now the derivative of the bottom. So we can say three on two, now, because it's greater than 3 on 2, we can say natural log of 2x minus 3. We don't need a plus c because it says find an antiderivative. And we don't need the mod. You could put a mod there if you wanted to because it's x is greater than 3 on 2. Okay, this thing here, we've got this information, but first what I'm going to do is expand this out. So I'm going to say 2 times 0 to 1. If I multiply that, I get f of x squared dx minus 3 from 0 to 1, f of x dx. Um, okay, I don't know where the marks are here. So 0 to 1 of f of x squared is 1 fifth, so 2 times one fifth that is equal to that. Am I missing something here? Um, minus three times one third. So we get two fifths minus. 1, which is negative 3 fifths. <laughs> okay. If I stuff something up here, 2 times f of x squared minus 3 times f of x. Hmm. I don't think so. That seemed really easy. Okay, first equation, we get y, infinite number of solutions. So they've got to be the same graph. So we get y is equal to k on 5x. So I brought that to the other side and that's the other side. Um, let's say plus minus 4 minus k on 5. The other equation we get y is equal to 3x, or 3 on k plus 8 times x minus 1 on k plus 8. 
If we equate coefficients, we get k on 5 is equal to 3 on k plus 8, k squared, oh my handwriting is terrible, terrible today, plus 8k is equal to 15, k squared plus 8k minus 15, this looks nice because we get k minus, uh, plus what? Minus 4 minus k minus 3x. So that's a minus 3, which means that's a minus 3, which means that's a minus 15, which means that's a plus. So k plus 3, k plus 5 equals 0. So k equals negative 3 or negative 5. Um, if k equals negative 3, we'll say c1. If I put negative 3 into that, we get negative, we get one fifth, uh, negative one fifth. C2, if I put negative three into that, we also get negative one fifth, so that's infinite. So it's determined the value, so there must be only one, but let's check it anyway. Um, if I put negative five, we get one fifth, and then there we get negative one third. So that's not a solution. Therefore, if k equals negative three, we have infinite solutions. Okay, this card is drawn from a red deck of red and blue cards. After verifying the color, the card is replaced in the deck. This is performed four times. Each card is probably of half of being red, half of being blue. The color of any card is independent of any other color. Okay, um, let X be the right now. Okay, so how many times are we doing it? Four times. Complete the table below. Um, X is number of blue cards, so we could get none. We could get one, which means we would have four C1, a half to the one, a half to the three. What's that gonna be? Four times a half, or four times the 16th. So let's say four on 16. Four choose three. That's gonna be exactly the same, four on 16. And then the last one, four choose four, that's one, and then a half to the power of four is one sixteenth. What do we get? 10, 16 sixteenths. Given that the first card is blue, find that probably exactly two of the next three cards drawn will be red. So we know it's blue. That's given. Red, red, blue. Blue, red, blue, red. Blue, blue, red, Red. Now they're all independent, so we can say we've got three cards and we want to choose two of them to be red. So red to the power of two, blue to the power of one, three times a quarter times a half, three on eight. The deck has changed, so there's probably a red card is two, so there's probably a, uh, given that the first card is blue, if one of probably exactly two of the next three cards will be red. So we've got blue, we can get red, red, blue, blue, red, blue, red. Um, it's exactly the same thing because they're all independent, the first one doesn't affect the next one. Um, so we'd have three, choose two. Two of the next three cards will be red, so two thirds to the power of two, one third to the power of one. Three times four ninths times one third, which is 12 on 27. 
which is four on nine. Okay, solve this. Um, 3x minus 13. If I log base 10 that, I get 2. 3x is 15. x is 3. Find the maximal domain of this. So x squared minus 2x minus 3 is greater than 0. x minus 3, x plus 1 is greater than 0. So if we sketch that, 3 minus 1, we know x is less than negative 1, or x is greater than 3. Okay, the graph of that, 2 sine 2x on the axis above, gets the graph of g of x, where g is a reflection in the horizontal axis. So, that's going to go like that, that, that. And that and that's going to go through the same spot that's going to go through there through there through there and through there that's going to look something like this but that's going to go to there okay uh, draw the graph of g of x by g as a reflection in the horizontal axis. That looks pretty good to me. Find all values of k such that f of k is equal to zero. Okay. 2 sine 2k minus 1 is zero. Sine 2k is a half. We know sine equals a half. We get pi on 6 and pi on 3. So we get 2k is equal to pi on 6 by pi on 6, first and second quadrant. Um, and that's f, isn't it? So that graph is f. g of x is the flip one. Okay, if I add 12 pi on 6, I get 13 pi on 6 and 17 pi on 6. K is equal to pi on 12, 5 pi on 12, 13 pi on 12, 17 pi on 12. Okay, let h of x be that, where h of x has the same rule as f of x with a different domain. The graph of hx is translated a and it's in the positive and b and it's up. So that is mapped onto the graph of g of x. A units in the positive direction and b units in the positive vertical direction. Okay. So we've got to move it that far across, which is 5 pi on 6. And then we've got to move it up 1. Find the value for b. Hang on. Yeah, so that's right, because if we move this graph, 5 pi on 6 to the right, it's going to move across there. Oof, and it's not up 1. Hang on, hang on, hang on. That's got to go to there. So we've got to move it pi on 2 to the right, and then up 2. Okay, so, so A is, so plus 2, A, find the smallest positive value. So we want to move it to the right, um, but that would be a negative value. So we've got to get a positive value. So we need to make this point go to here. So that's going to be plus pi on 2. Uh, no, yeah, that's right, that's right. Because if we move it pi on 2 to the left, oops. So we get a is pi on 2. 
state the domain of D. Hmm. The domain of D based on what? Uh, where A and B are between zero and infinity. So if we want it to do one full cycle, I'm assuming that's what it means. Then we would go from pi on two to five pi on two. X is an element of pi on two to five pi on two. <laughs> Translated A units in the positive direction of the x-axis. Find the value for B, which has to be positive. Find the value for A, which has to be positive. It's a little bit silly, but... Okay. Um, the front has 20 by 20. So each colour covers half the front. So the tiles can be lined up a single row so that it forms a continuous set. There are two types of tiles, type A and type B. For type A, the colours are divided into using that rule. The corners of the tiles have 0, 20, 20, 20. Find the area of the front surface of each tile. 20 by 20, which is 400 centimetres squared. Find the value of A such so, so that the tile, tile A meets condition. Okay, so if we know that's 20, and we know that's zero, A has to be 10. Because it's got to go up to the center. B tiles are given like that. What's condition one? Okay, so show that it covers. Okay, so we've got it in this case here. We say the area from 0 to 20 of negative x cubed on 100 plus 3x squared on 10 minus 2x plus 10 dx equals, what are we going to get? Negative x to the 4 on 400 plus x cubed on um, 10 minus x squared plus 10x between 20 and 0. Okay, so we've got negative 20 squared times 20 squared on 400. So we know they cancel plus 20 cubed. 400 times 2 is 800, 8,000 on 10 minus 400 plus 200 minus 0. Okay. Minus 400 plus 800 minus 400 plus 200 equals 200 centimeters squared, which is half of 400 centimeters squared. Determine the endpoints of F and G on each tile, hence use these values to confirm the tile, and placed in any order to produce those. Okay, so we can say, F of zero, F of zero is four sine pi on zero on ten plus ten, 
which is 10, f of 20 is 4 sine of 2 pi plus 10, which is 10, g of 0 is, this is a bit stupid, 100 plus 3 times 0 on 10, minus 2 times 0 plus 10, which equals 10. <laughs> Lastly, g of 20. Okay, negative 8,000 on 100. 3 times 400 is 1,200 on 10. Minus 2 times 20. Plus 10. <laughs> Negative 80 plus 120 minus 40 plus 10, which equals 10. Therefore, f of 0 equals f of 20 equals g of 0, which equals g of 20, which equals 10, therefore can be placed. In any order. How many questions is it? Holy shit. Okay, right, that's. Is that all we need to do? Um, I should say, and will be continuous. Okay, part of the rule A of K is K sine KX, which gives K sine K. So it's X sine X gives a boundary area of the graph. And the line X equals K. Find the value of A of pi on 3. So A of pi on 3 is pi on 3 sine pi on 3. We know sine of pi on 3 is root 3 on 2. Um, so you can say pi root 3 on 6. Hang on, hang on, hang on. So that's the area. Part of the graph of F. Paragraph of F and the rule A of K, K sine X gives a bounded area for that graph. Um, evaluate F of pi on 3. Hmm. Uh, rule A K K sine K. So that's the integral So once we integrate that we get that So let's say f of x is d dx of x sine x, which is, derive that, we get sine x times sine x, 1 times sine x, plus sine x, which is cos x, so we get x cos x. Therefore, f of pi on 3 is sine of pi on 3 plus pi on 3 cos of pi on 3, which is um, sine of pi on 3, root 3 on 2, plus pi on 6. So we get 3 root 3 plus pi on 6. <clears throat> Let's check it. 
If I was to anti diff, oh, you can't really. But hopefully that makes sense. Because when we anti diff this, when we anti diff this, we get that area there from zero to K. And if you think about it, if you anti diff something and get K sine K between zero and I'll just say you got x sine x. Um, you know that's going to give you k sine k because when you're sub zero and you're going to get zero. Okay, consider the average value function over the interval zero to k where k is between zero and two. Find the value that will result in the maximum average value. Um, so that average value would be the average value would be one over k. That's the size of the interval um, of this function sine x plus x cos x dx. We know if we do between zero and k, we end up with one over k, and then we get k sine of k. Um, that's when we sub those values in as well. So our average value is going to be sine of k. If we want to find our maximum, we need to diff that, and that's the area between 0 and k. So when is sine of k a maximum? between zero and two. So we want F max of sine of K between zero and two. So if we derive that, we get cos X, we get cos of K, if I let that equal zero, because when sine has a maximum, that's going to be at k is equal to pi on two. Which is like 1.57. <laughs> um, Let me just test it on the calculator to make sure I haven't led you astray. So, zero to. Uh, we could just go sine sine x. F max between zero and two, pi on two. Um, find OK that results in the maximum average value. Yeah. So we could just try it. We know it's the function itself, we know is sine x plus x cos x. So let's have a look at that. I know you don't have this, but I just want to check and make sure. Sine x plus x cos x. Okay. 
if I zoom in, if I find the area, the average value. So if I said find the average value, one on K, um, the integral from zero to K of sine x plus x cos x dx, we end up with sine of k. Yeah, that's got to be our answer. All right, I've probably made some mistakes in there. Um, who knows? I don't have a lot of time, so derive that you get 3e to the 2x, 6x e to the 2x, yep. B times u dash minus u times b dash, yep. That all looks correct. 3 on 2, 2x minus 3. Find the rule for that and antiderivative, that looks right. This one scares me, it's worth three marks. I don't know why two times f of x, it's only applying to that. Minus three times f of x. Hmm. We wanted infinite solutions, that's right. That one seemed all right, that one's right. Can't be zero, um, but it can be anything greater than that. So x minus three, x plus one, that all looks right. I think this is correct too, just unsure on this domain, hence I otherwise state the domain of h of x. So the graph that is translated a units in the positive horizontal and b units in the positive vertical direction so that it's mapped. But it can't go in the positive direction, it's got to go, you've got to have a plus value for a because a is between that. So a has to be pi on 2, which translates it pi on 2 back that way. And then if we move it up to this graph, becomes this graph and then it will go between those two values. Um, all of this seems pretty okay. Unless I've made a small error here, pi half, mm-hmm. Okay. Um, sorry to say it, but that seemed way too easy. I actually didn't even think. Um, maybe I've made mistakes and I didn't recognize them. <laughs> Hopefully it helps. Don't not guarantee these are the answers, but um, yeah. All right, have a look. Bye.